I'm Susan Koenig and this is Somatics for You. This video is a series of videos about working with somatic movement for the feet and then integrating foot movement into various regions of the body and even the whole body. I'm very interested in this at this time because I am recovering from a left foot sprain. I sprained my foot uh, mid-tarsal, mid-foot. Uh, the main sprain was over in this area and not my ankle per se. However, I'm going to start with this video in with ankle movements because I've been using all these movements to rehabilitate uh, my left foot. I'm going to start with the movements of the ankle. If you bring your foot and your toes can come along towards your kneecap, that's dorsiflexion. If you move your foot in the opposite direction, which this fellow doesn't do very well, and you point your toes and you allow your heel to come upward, that is plantar flexion. So we will be working, I will be working to show you movements of dorsi and plantar flexion. In plantar flexion, mainly the calf muscles will be contracted. The most well-known are the soleus, which is right underneath the more superficial muscle, the gastrocnemius. And then in the front, the anterior tibialis, which is a major dorsi flexor, along with toe extensors. Toe extensors, extension of the toe means the toes come up. So dorsiflexion and digit or toe extension go together. When you are plantar flexing and you're pointing your toes, even curling your toes under, that's more of a flexion of the toes. What I've actually been doing to really help myself the very most, aside from the movement you're going to see in this video and several videos on the feet that I'll be doing, is I've been working with the whole cat routine. You can find the whole cat routine in the book Somatics. This is the newer cover. This is the older cover. It's the exact same book. And now we also have it in Spanish. And the whole cat routine, the daily cat routine, is listed on page 99, and the movement directions are in the back of the book, and I highly recommend that in addition to these moves. So now I'm going to start by lying down on my back. And I'm angling myself, hopefully, so you can see what I'm doing better. And I'm going to start with simple plantar and dorsiflexion, one foot at a time. So I'm going to start with my right foot. This is the non-injured side. And I'm going to plantar flex, slowly release, plantar flex, slowly release. This is the pendicular process, or in this case, self-pendicular process, a two-part process. In the first part, you voluntarily make a contraction. So I am voluntarily contracting the calf muscles. And then in the second part, I slowly and with control release to neutral and rest and then repeat as many times as I want to repeat. The pendicular process is excellent for reducing and releasing chronic muscular contraction, general contraction in the muscles, tightness, and it particularly uses the motor cortex of the brain. So now I'll go to the injured foot. It's, I'm coming along very well. I'll be, I'm very careful. I may not, I'll only go as far as is comfortable. And that is what I suggest, whether you've injured your foot or not, you only do these movements in comfort. So I'm going to plantar flex. That's actually very comfortable. Slowly release, little shakier on the release. I can feel that internally. And I'm going to repeat two more times. Contract and slowly release the calf muscles. Contract and slowly release the calf muscles from plantar flexion. Now dorsiflexion. I'm going to bring my foot forward. I'm actually trying to bring my toes forward. They're not working all that well right now. Slowly let them release. 
and dorsiflex, including my toes, which are in extension to the best of my ability, and slowly release. And then one more time, dorsiflexion with toe extension, and slowly release to neutral and relax.